What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmedesign.com and I can't believe it but it's actually day 30 in our 30 tips in 30 days video series and today I'm going to share with you guys a very cool tip on how you can add facial hair to anybody in Photoshop. Alright guys, so uh, in this lesson I'm going to show you how you can add facial hair uh, to any of your images in Photoshop. Um, this is a pretty cool technique and it's something that um, you know people ask me about sometimes so I figured I would uh, come in and, and share it with you guys. So um, the first thing you're going to do is come in here and uh, select a, a default brush in, in Photoshop actually. Where are you? Yes, we want uh, basically a grass brush which kind of resembles uh, a hair, a strand of hair. So um, we're going to use that, but we're going to check off a few of these settings here in the brushes panel. Um, the first thing we want to do is actually check off shape dynamics. Um, and then you can start to move some of these sliders around and kind of see what it's doing. But uh, you want it to be slightly angled. And we also want to check off uh, scatter, right? But we don't want it too scattered. We want it to be somewhat close together. Um, just to start to, to build up like a thicker, you know, kind of beard or, or area of hair. So uh, from there, um, just create a new layer on top of your image and sample a little bit of the hair just by grabbing the eyedropper tool and, uh, and clicking, sample a little bit of the hair color. And then I'm just going to quickly kind of start to, to paint some of this in. And don't worry, it's not going to look, you know, very pretty at first, but uh, you'll see how we can actually... Uh, you know, build this effect up over time, you know, gradually. And it's really all about just kind of, you know, layering um, hair, you know, layering it in different values, different colors, um, and thickness in different areas to give it, you know, a different look, right? You can always come in and, you know, erase it or, um, you know, mask it out. Um, and you also have this option here, actually, which is uh, kind of nice. It's the Flip X Jitter or flip Y jitter and that's basically gonna either flip it you know horizontally or vertically um, and it's good because it gives you more variation right uh, variation is is key um, when you're doing this kind of stuff um, and you know again you want to kind of mix in little areas of lighter hair darker hair um, and change the opacity and the size of your brush right so that you can make it look more random and scattered and you're gonna hear me clicking a lot, but uh, you know this is actually probably better to do with the tablet. But uh, you know, I was just lazy. Decided to use my mouse. Actually, it's because I only have um, like two. I think I only have like two USB ports on my computer, and uh, one of them is being used right now by the microphone that I'm using to talk to you guys. And the other one, of course, is my you know my keyboard. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll have to do something about that because uh, there's going to be a lot of tutorials where I do want to use my, my Wacom. Wacom. Alright, so if you guys don't use a tablet, I definitely recommend getting one, especially when you start doing, you know, more uh, photo manipulation or, or anything where you just have to be clicking a lot, you know, with your mouse like I'm doing now. Um, of course, illustration, painting, retouching. Um, it's just a great tool to have uh, for all those things. So, and you know, you can find some pretty affordable ones out there now. There's quite a few options on the market for you guys to check out. And I've had the same one for about I don't know five or six years at least, and you know, it served me pretty well. I have like an 11 by 14 uh, deal that I use, and I think at the time it was maybe like two or three hundred bucks. You know, probably get it for even less now, but. I mean, the ones they have out now are, are ridiculous. You know, the Cintiqs, it's got the screen on the tablet. and I've seen people use it, and uh, we had one at my old job, actually, when I was still working uh, for WWE. Um, they had got some of those, and, you know, it was cool. It definitely took a while to get used to, like anything, but um, it was definitely pretty fun, you know, fun to mess with because... Um, you know what you were you're essentially it's more like a drawing pad than anything you know what you're what you're viewing it's like drawing directly on your screen you know um, so that's cool 
good stuff. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I'm just you know continuing to to build this up, um, and I'm constantly you know changing the size of my brush just using the left and right bracket keys here, and also uh, varying the opacity of the brush just using the number keys, you know three for thirty percent, four for forty percent, and so on. All right, when I zoom out a little bit, you know, you can see it's getting there. You can see, you know, what's happening, and um, it's definitely good to, to zoom in and out um, just to check in and, and see how everything's looking. And, you know, you can really uh, customize this as much as you want. Um, and you'll see over here I have my brushes panel open still. You've got, you know, pen pressure as an option, but um, it's not really using that right now just because I don't have a tablet connected. But... Um, you know, if you move the count slider up, it's obviously going to make it a lot more uh, dense. You know, you'll, the hair will be dense and less spread out, um, which is, is good if you want to make it look like a really, you know, grizzly looking beard. Um, then that's kind of how you would go about doing that. You know, and, and you know, this is uh, looking a little bit scraggly, so I'm going to apply a layer mask and then... Uh, turn up the opacity of my brush and just use black to kind of erase some of these areas. It's okay to have, you know, some straggly hair because, you know, um, even a perfectly manicured beard is going to have some randomness to it and, and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. Then I'm going to apply the layer mask. And one other thing you can do is um, select a a large uh, soft round brush right and use a low opacity maybe like 10 or 20 percent and sample a little bit of the hair color and then um, change the blending mode to multiply and that will you know darken certain areas that would be a little bit heavier in the shadows like around the chin maybe the mustache a little bit not so much on the sides of his face because that's kind of where uh, you know the light is hitting but you can kind of see how that's how that's coming along, you know. And uh, I think he needs some more hair, kind of underneath, um, underneath, and on his chin, and on the jawline, and everything like that. But you know, a couple of people have have asked me, and you know, I've seen on Facebook and in the forums and stuff like that. Um, you know, how do you how do you create facial hair? You know, how do you fake uh, facial hair rather? And uh, this is one way to do it. I mean. Like anything in Photoshop, you know, I'm sure there's a hundred different ways that you can you can achieve the uh, the same result, the same effect, um, you know. But this is one way that I I kind of learned about, and you know, I use it quite a bit, you know, especially if uh, you know you want to make somebody look like they have you know a beard or, or more more growth. All right, so. Again, it's just you know kind of layering some of these uh, these hairs here. I'm actually going to select a, a lighter color and mix in a few of these, but not quite that dense. You know, you just want to get a couple a couple of stray hairs in here, you know, and then just paint over it and, and kind of overlap it as you go. All right, and keep doing this and you know gradually building it up. I know it takes a little bit of time to get it to look right, but um, you know, you really have, you know, full control over it. You know, and it's, it can be kind of fun, you know, it's kind of, uh, you kind of zone out and just, you know, have a little bit of fun doing this, and I certainly enjoy it. I thought you guys would find it to be a uh, helpful tip as well. And, uh, you know, if you really want to go out, go all out, you could even make a few um, different types of facial hair on different layers. Um, that you can kind of turn on and off, you know, and customize it and see what you like and, you know, take a, take a few stabs at it and, and yeah, go to town, go to town, guys. All right. So you see, I'm just kind of working on the stash a little bit. And again, you know, if, if it's looking a little too messy, I'm just going to uh, apply another layer mask and kind of come in and, and take a few cuts out of it here, right? I'm just using a solid black with the same brush and going over certain parts that I want to uh, want to manicure a little bit more, right? 
and see if I, you know, if I duplicate it, it's even, even thicker. You really get that effect. But you can lower the opacity a little bit more. You know, add some shadow to it, um, which I might do actually a little bit of uh, shading below. You know, just forgot to change the uh, blending mode to multiply. And that kind of helps a little bit, just darkening underneath. You know, and uh, yeah, I think you guys kind of see how this works. It's it's cool. It's, you know, um, gonna grab all these layers, just put them in a group so you can see the before and after, before and after. I think he looks much friendlier with a beard, personally. So beards are cool. You know, not everybody can grow a good beard though. Mine's a little patchy, but what can you do? Anyway, guys, um, that's about it. You know, this is uh, the last day of our 30 tips in 30 days video series. Um, you know, I've shown you guys a lot of cool stuff that you can do in Photoshop and Illustrator, and uh, really just scratching the surface. You know, I could go a lot deeper with with any of this stuff, but um, the main purpose of this was to show you guys, you know, some of the things that. Uh, that you can learn uh, by following uh, Teach Me to Design, watching our channels on YouTube, you know, signing up for our boot camps and our email list, and um, you know, the best is yet to come. So I hope that you will continue to watch. I've got some some great ideas that I think you guys are really going to enjoy. So uh, stay tuned for that, and let us know how we can help you design better.